Good morning. It's about time for us to begin, and happy Father's Day. Welcome to worship services for the St. Peter's Church of Christ. It's my understanding there's a gift for fathers in the foyer as you're leaving. So if you're a father, be sure to pick up one of your gifts. Uh, those were provided by Dorothy before she started her westward trip. So be sure and thank her when, uh, when she and Fred make it back. Shortly, Matt will be reading from Titus 2, 11 through 14 for us. So if you want to be turning there. Again, that's Titus 2, 11 through 14. Frank will be leading us in song this morning. Jim will lead our opening prayer. Joe and Larry will lead us through the Lord's Supper Memorial as well as the prayer for our giving. And Charles will have our closing prayer. Jamie is taking care of the technical functions in the audiovisual booth as usual. This evening at 5 p.m., we encourage everyone to be back at the building for worship services. Our emphasis tonight will be on singing, and for those still joining us from home, that service will also be live streamed on YouTube. Wednesday at 7 p.m., we will meet at the building once again. Jim will present our devotional lesson this Wednesday, and JC will lead our auditorium Bible study, and these will also be live streamed. Next Sunday evening, June 28th, Colton Busby will be speaking for us. Colton is a member of the Arnold Church of Christ and plans to begin his studies at the Memphis School of Preaching this fall. So we encourage everyone to be here next Sunday evening to hear Colton. On Tuesday, June 23rd, Kay Hampton will turn 95 years young. I have to make sure I get that right. 95 years young, Kay Hampton, June 23rd, Please send cards and let her know how much we love and appreciate her. Please check the newsletter, the bulletin, uh, for a complete listing of those needing our prayers at this time. I do want to highlight a few. Ron Morrow, Fred's brother, is having surgery for his stomach aneurysm on June 22nd. So I guess that's tomorrow. Connie Eubanks, friend of Jan McCafferty, has successful liver transplant and is going to, or is probably in rehab, but if not, she is going to rehab. Please continue to pray for her continued recovery. Marty Neal, friend and former Nashville School of Preaching classmate of Brandon Foster. He's been diagnosed with COVID-19. He was in critical condition uh, last week, but now is showing significant improvement. So if you could remember Marty Neal in your prayers, that would be wonderful. Jathaniel Cavett, Jerry's nephew, is not feeling well and was tested for the virus as well yesterday. Uh, is showing all the symptoms and we'll find out the results in the next few days. But please remember him in your prayers. And Zach Dotson, Deanna's grandson, recently enlisted in the Army, so please remember him in your prayers as well. And don't forget about all those who are still not able to worship here at the building with us in your prayers. This time we'll begin with our scripture reading. Matt. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify, and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. First song this morning is The Gospel is for All. <coughs> Sing all three stanzas.
Psalm before the prayer is number 843. Brother Jim will be leading us in the prayer after this song. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, it is so great to be able to gather together this morning as brothers and sisters in Christ, as friends, to have this opportunity to worship you. As we've just sung, your Son is our desire. Our goal is to be with you in heaven through all eternity. And we pray that as we go through our lives, that we take, do the things necessary to secure our salvation. And we thank you, Lord God, that we have your Bible, that we have the means by which we can understand your will. We can read for ourselves what it takes to be saved, what it takes to be your children. And we pray that each and every person here uh, holds to that and keeps it in their heart and that they love you with all their soul and all their heart and all their mind and all their might. It's a challenge for us in this world to live each day. It always has been. Even in the days of, of, of Adam and Eve and Noah, on through down through history, there are things that can distract us, things that can tempt us, things that can cause us to not be faithful to you. And we pray, O oh Lord God, that we'll be able to resist those things, always taking the way out of, of escape that you provided so that we will not be 
tempted to sin and to do things that will cause us to not be the people you would have us to be. But we're thankful, O Lord God, that as children, as those who are in Christ, we have the means for which we can be forgiven. And we certainly, as we, anytime we pray, as we come together, we ask for your forgiveness for those things that are in our lives that shouldn't be, things that we need to change. Let us be truly repentant and desirous of, of doing what is right. This morning, O Lord God, we certainly want to thank you for many things. We want to thank you for those who are healing and doing better. Uh, we're certainly glad to hear that Connie is doing so much better and hope that she gets into rehab shortly and, and gets a chance to get back to a better health and normal life. Uh, we look, pray for Ron with his surgery tomorrow that goes well. We know that it's, there is a risk associated with that because of his age and health, and we pray that he will come through it well. Uh, we're glad to hear that um, Martin's doing better, and uh, any that are, have uh, had the virus uh, will have a chance to recover and get strong and, and return to good health. We pray for Nathan and hope that uh, they, they find that he doesn't have the virus. But we also want to pray for those that, that we know that uh, are in our hearts always. We think of Cindy and pray that uh, she'll continue to do well. Uh, my granddaughter, Kelsey, uh, we thank you that she's doing better. We hope that she will uh, find ways to get to much better health. And for all those on our prayer list, Lord God, we, we thank you them for the opportunity we have to pray for them. And we pray, Lord God, uh, for this country. Uh, we have a lot of divisions. We have a lot of issues. We have a lot of problems. Uh, these are not new. They, they've always been there. But we seem to have them right now causing a lot of, of stress and uh, troubles. Pray that they can be resolved. And we need strong leadership in order to do that. And strong leadership is best when it looks to you for guidance as to what's the right thing to do. Government has a purpose. Government is ordained by you. And they need to understand what their responsibilities are and how to conduct themselves so that they can be the kind of leaders necessary to have a nation truly under you. And we thank you this morning, O oh Lord God, for the opportunity we have uh, to worship. We have the opportunity to hear a message from your word. We look forward to, the, to hearing the lesson that Jerry has prepared for us. We thank you for him and uh, Joey leading us uh, as they do as our elders. We thank you for the deacons and the Bible class teachers and all those that work in, in our congregation to further your kingdom. We thank you for their service. We pray, O oh Lord God, that uh, all of us do all we can to help others to come to understand what the gospel is and how to obey it and how to be the, the people that you would have us to be. Be with us throughout this hour. Thank you for blessing us all. And uh, we certainly love this opportunity once again to meet together that we had for so many months not able to. These things we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The invitation to song after proper time is number 382, Kneel at the Cross. The song before the lesson is number 595. We're going to sing the first, second, and third stanza, 595. Shall we stand as we sing the song? And after the singing of the song, you may be seated. <clears throat> stand up, stand up for Jesus, Jesus.
Ik zie dit. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19, John reminds us that the whole world lieth in wickedness. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, Paul reminds us that in the last days, uh, perilous times shall come. And then beginning in verse 2, he describes the, the mindset. He describes the manner of living in reference to the perilous times that will come. As we look at our world today, we certainly can see the, the hostility and the hatred and so forth. As we look at our world today, we can see the ingratitude, the irreverence that is displayed toward God, and it is abounding. In our world today, we see the ignorance of God's Word. And that is affirmed every day. Just look at the newspaper, news sources. You can see the ignorance of God's word being affirmed. As you look at our world today, you see the indifference that exist and it is all around. People uh, do not care for God. Uh, they do not care for spiritual things and tragically even for other people. As you look at our world today we see immorality and it abounds. It abounds. And so in our world, we have this mindset. We have this manner of living that is certainly contrary to God and to His will. Sadly and tragically, It is being accepted. It is being advocated. It is being admired even by the masses and it continues to grow. In this series of lessons that we started weeks ago, Dealing with the Christian's response to the world. As we see the world, as we are in this present world, what should the Christian's response be to that? In First Corinthians chapter 6, beginning with verse 19, Paul says, What? Know ye not? that your body is the temple of God. And he talks about the fact that we have the Holy Spirit, which is in you. He says, which you have a God. And then he says, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body 
and in your spirit, which are God's. Know you not that your body is a temp temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have a God, and ye are not your own. As we as Christians, as we as children of God, look at how we ought to respond to the things that we see, to the things that we hear in the world. Here's something we need to remember. And we have emphasized this. But again, we'll do so. We need to remember that we don't belong to ourselves. Nor she says ye are not your own. Our body is not our own. We cannot do just whatever we want to do in this world. Because you see, we belong to the Lord. And then he says, for ye are bought with a price. We as Christians, children of God, belong to the Lord. We have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And by the very fact that we have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that ought to remind each one of us how significant we are in the mind of the Lord. To shed his blood for us. To buy us. To be bought. Yes, we belong to him. And then he points out how that we ought to behave since we belong to the Lord, since we have been bought by his blood. Therefore, because of those first two things, therefore, behave in a way that brings glory to God. A great passage, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. And we ought to be reminded of that. And especially as you look at the mindset and the manner of living we see in our world today. So here's how we ought to respond. I remember, and I think about this, I don't belong to myself. I don't have the right to go out here and do whatever I want to do. Or to say whatever I want to say. But I belong to the Lord. And I have been bought by the blood of Jesus. So I'm going to behave in a way that glorifies God. If I behave in this world in a way that does not glorify God, How can I claim to belong to the Lord? If I behave in a way that does not glorify God, then what Jesus did for me was in vain. The reason that he bought me with his blood, the reason that I now belong to him, is so that I could become that changed individual. Therefore, I can display, I can demonstrate to the world what it means and how to glorify God. Everything we do must be that focus. Is this Lifting up God. Is this honoring God? Is this 
glorifying God. If it's not, then it must not be done. In this series of lessons, we have already noticed three main things. As we remember these, how we are to behave, that means in response to the world that we are to love not the world, 1 John 2, 15 to 17. That means we're not to be, that we are to conform not to the world, Romans chapter 12. That means that we are to be crying out against the evil words and the evil ways of this world. And that means that we are to be communicating to the world the word of God. Number two, we notice that we are to lean not unto our own understanding and also the understanding of others. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. We are to lean, we are to rely upon God. Therefore, we need to make sure that we learn the Scripture. Give attention to it. We analyze it. We accept it as it is and understand what it is for, how it can benefit us. Listen, we can't behave in a way to glorify God unless we understand what that means. And the Word of God gives us that meaning. And therefore, we began to apply that which we learn to our lives. This morning, and Jamie will put up the scripture reading for this morning. This is our point number five. We talk about how we ought to respond to the world. We'll be looking at this passage here in Titus 2, verse 11 through 14. Looking at it from the standpoint that in this passage, Paul does remind us how that we should always live. And we see the words. King James translation says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. How should we respond to what's happening in the world? To the mindset and to the manner of living that is in the world? How should we respond to that? Live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. As long as I am in this present world, I am to live soberly. Meaning, be sober-minded, sound mind, one of self-control, one of self-restraint. And this is emphasizing that which is inward. This is the mindset that we must develop. Being a sound mind, self-constraint. And unless this is put into practice, there will not be 
living righteously and godly. It's not going to happen. So Paul says you need to live soberly. You need to live righteously, rightly, in accordance certainly with God's will. We understand that. That is emphasizing the outward. This is emphasizing what we do in our life, especially in relationship to others. So we have the inward, be sober-minded. We have the outward, living righteously. And then he talks about godly. In reference to our relationship with God, that's the upward. That's the upward. And that's what we were emphasizing in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. Therefore, glorify God. So that verse, this verse, is emphasizing to us the totality of our actions. As you think about how, talking about inward, outward, and upward, we have to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The reason I have wanted Jamie to put this text up, up, up on the, the wall, uh, I want to emphasize some reasons why that we must remember the importance of living this kind of life in this present world. And I want you to see some key concepts, if you will, in this passage. What do we see in this passage? Notice how it begins. Both King James and New King James states, For the grace of God that brings or bringeth. Salvation has appeared to all men. When you look at this passage and you read the word grace, you see here the special favor of God. Now, as we look at these different concepts that we find here in this passage, remember, we're thinking about living soberly, righteous, and godly. You see, this is directly connected to the special favor of God. That's what God's grace is. A demonstration of his favor to man. You see, when I fail to live soberly, righteously, and godly, I am, in a sense, degrading the special favor of God. You see, whatever God has done for us in a special way to help us to be one of his children, he has done so so that we can live this kind of life. But when I choose not to live this kind of life, I am degrading his special favor. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. In this passage, you read about the salvation that God offers to all of mankind. 
And even in, the, for example, the word redeemed, we're reminded of salvation. We have been redeemed. We have been delivered. Salvation. Now, the significance of that is, as you read further in this passage, for the grace of God that brings us salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us by denying ungodliness and worthy lust, we shall live soberly righteous and godly in this present world. I notice it says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now notice, who gave himself for us, King James says, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. New King James says, lawless deed. The only reason that any person needs to understand something about salvation is because of this, is because of sin. God's special favor was given to mankind because of the sin of mankind. And therefore God desires salvation for man because of sin that man had committed. We go back to verse 1, or verse 2 if you will. It says, teaching us, teaching us, teaching us, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us. Teaching us. What is the concept there? Well, it's Scripture. It is by and through the Scripture that we are taught about the special favor of God. It is by and through the Scripture that we're taught about salvation, that we're taught about sin, and teaching us. That's the Scripture. Acts 20 and verse 32. Talking about through the word of His grace. If I want to learn how to live, where do I need to go? I need to go to the Scripture. And so what does the Scripture teach us? It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, it teaches us that there are some things that we are not to do. Remember, love not the world. Be not conformed to the world. And so it teaches us, denying ungodliness and worthy lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I know it's verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why is it important? For us, as we think about living soberly righteous and godly in this present world, to think about God's special favor, His salvation, sin, the Scripture. But also, He points out something else we need to think about. Is the second coming of the Lord. Talk about the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
when you study about the second coming of Jesus. And there are many verses in the New Testament that reference that. And so we know of its reality. We know of its certainty. It is coming. You will see that many times it is spoken of in connection with our mindset and our manner of living. I said, why do you think that's significant? Oh, this, this is a motivation for us to make sure that our mindset and our manner of living is in harmony with the will of God. And one thing that will motivate us to do that is to remember the appearing of our Lord. That is his second coming. Because with his second coming, then that is the destruction of this world. There is a resurrection of all. There is those who are living at that time will be changed there will be the declaring of judgment of all of mankind and eternity, either in heaven or hell. The writers of the New Testament does not, does not just talk about the second coming of Christ for you to understand that it's going to happen one day. But it's all connected with the end of time. And with the end of time, that's the end of the opportunities that we have here in this present world. So looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Notice who gave himself for us. What do you see in that phrase? Who gave himself? Paul has already mentioned the fact we talk about our Savior. And when he talks about who gave himself for us, we talk about here a sacrifice. That this world needed. What's the word for? Who gave himself for us. He sacrificed himself. He suffered for us. He took our place. Not so that we could just live any kind of life we want to live in this present world but it's so that we could live a life to bring honor and glory to God. And he gave himself for us that he might redeem us. Notice he might redeem us from all iniquity. We don't have to live in sin. God doesn't want that. The Lord does not desire that. so that he might redeem us from all iniquity. And then it says, and to purify himself, his own special people. King James says that he might purify unto himself a Peculiar people. We have here a separated people. The word uh, peculiar simply has reference to a people 
for his own possession. And so he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. And notice, a separated people. Are we to have the mindset of the world? No. How about our manner of living? Is to be like the world? No. Why? Because we are a peculiar people. We are a separated people. We are a special people. We are a, a people for God's own possession. So there is a difference in our life. And then he says, zealous for good works. Service. Why are we to live soberly righteous and godly in this present world? What is so important about doing that? First of all, the world needs it. The world needs it. But also it's something that is so important. Because it is directly tied to, connected to, linked to the special favor of God, to salvation, to sin, to the scripture, second coming, to sacrifice that our Savior made, becoming a separated people so that we can render service. Why do we do what we do? Why are we involved in good works? So that God can be glorified. We are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore we belong to him. And therefore we are to behave in a special way that demands a mindset, that demands a manner of living that is separated from the world. Because God is to be glorified. This morning, as Frank is about to lead us in this song, if you have not yet obeyed the gospel, we encourage you to do that. We know the importance of that. And God has put everything in place. And whatever God has done, God has done for the benefit of man and for the benefit of the salvation of man not only in the present world, but also that of eternal salvation, heaven itself. When a person hears the gospel, they study the gospel, they come to believe, that faith is developed, which leads them to repent of their sins, at least it should, and then they stand ready to acknowledge the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They desire to do that. Because they're beginning to understand the importance of who the Lord is, the significance of what he did, and what we can be, and what we should be in this present world. And then we're buried with him in baptism to be raised to walk in newness of life. We begin to live that separated life, serving in a way that honors him. If you need to respond to the invitation this morning, never having obeyed the gospel, you need to come as a child of God. Then we encourage you to come while together we stand.
and as we sing. We, as God's people, we serve a loving God, a merciful God, a gracious God. Everything about him is great. Everything is great. And how thankful every day we ought to be for his greatness, for his goodness, for his grace, and his desire for his people to be with him one day. And that's why we need to, to strive to make sure that we are doing those things and saying those things that we need to be doing and saying because we want to be prepared. But when we stand before the great judge of all, because we want to hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter.
Life, of course, is filled with all kinds of choices and decisions we make. Some may not be good. And certainly if such decisions has an effect upon our spiritual well-being, then we want to make sure that that's not standing in our way. I will read to you what uh, Mary uh, wrote. She said, I left uh, the church many years ago, then came back after many years. She says, I've been back 26 years, but haven't come forward. the church you know we do need to remember that when we have sinned publicly that and we talked about this different times how that changing locations doesn't take care of that or start doing good things now doesn't take care of that. Neither does time. And whenever we have sinned and we have brought reproach upon the church, that is a public thing. And we need to take care of it that way James says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much we know what Peter told Simon to do repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray to God that the fall of thy heart might be forgiven thee let me encourage all of us as we look back at our own life, all the things in our own life that we haven't taken care of, may Mary's example this morning encourage all of us to examine ourselves and see exactly where we are and where we stand. Appreciate her determination her desire to make things right. She wants to be devoted to the Lord. Everybody here knows her, knows that to be the case. And we appreciate her. Let us pray. Our Father, we are so thankful for thy loving kindness. We're so thankful for the opportunity and the privilege that we have to be thy children. The opportunity we have to strive to live in such a way as to bring honor and glory to thee and to have a good influence upon those around us. And Father, we pray for Mary this morning. We're thankful for her. We're thankful for her willingness to acknowledge those things that she felt was not right in her life and she wants to correct those things this morning. We're thankful for that courage and the attitude that, you know, I need to make sure that things are right because I want to make sure that I can go to heaven one day. Father, be with her. Forgive her of those things. And we pray that she will be strengthened. We pray that she will continue to look to thee and to thy word. And may each one of us continue to be that kind of person as well. As we feast upon thy word, as we rely upon it. So that we too can make sure that we are right in thy sight. 
For these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. This is now the part of the worship service that will be partaking in the Lord's Supper. And then after the Lord's Supper, the offering. In preparation of the Lord's Supper, we'll be singing 203. Sing the first, second, and fourth stanza. And This is the time where we have an opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper and reflect upon the sacrifice uh, that Jerry mentioned this morning and um, the purchase uh, of ourselves as Christians that was, that was made. Uh, with this in mind, let's give thanks for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. We're so thankful, Father, uh, for Jesus for his life here upon this earth. And we pray that as we take this bread to remember his body, that we do so in a manner that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Show you thanks. Father, we come here to remember daily the sacrifice thy son gave for us. We pray now as we take this fruit of the vine and remember that blood shed for those sins. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Uh, please do remember that there is an opportunity for you to uh, leave your contribution uh, at both entrances to the building on the side and in the front. And at this time, we will pray uh, for that part of worship as well. Dear Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for all that you bless us with here in this world. We know that all good things come from you, and we know, Father, that uh, all spiritual blessings are found in Christ. Father, we are so thankful that you provide for our physical needs here upon this earth, for the food that we eat, the clothing we have, the shelter that we enjoy, the many comforts and luxuries beyond the things that we need, uh, which you have showered down upon us. Father, as we give back a portion of those things, 
Help us to uh, remember your goodness and your uh, generosity and help us to give in a joyful and pleasing spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Closing songs number 297. We'll sing all three standards. Shall we stand as we sing the song? Remain standing for the closing prayer. I want to. pray together. Father in heaven, we come again to thank you for this privilege to gather in your name. Father, we're thankful for your word that teaches us how we can live our lives daily. We pray, Father, that we will always strive to do a better job at living uh, your will. We thank you, Father, for the, the improvements that have been made in the health of the nation. We continue to pray for the time when we can be well, whole again, and be able to assemble without having to social distance. We thank you for those that are working hard to combat this illness. We pray, Father, for their success. We thank you, Father, for the success of those that have had healing in their lives. We look forward to the time when we can uh, again be back to normal. We pray for the continued healing of those that are on our prayer list and need your, hand, need your healing hand in their lives. Give them peace and comfort according to your will. Go with us throughout <clears throat> the rest of this day. Help us to live for you. Thank you for your son and the sacrifice he made for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>